now. Okay. Hello, I'm uh, Jared McNett, and I'm a re politics reporter for the Sioux City Journal. And uh, with me, I have Megan Jones, uh, who is a Republican state rep running for re-election in Iowa House District 6. Hello, Megan. Hi there. Um, so I think maybe the easiest way to start is to just get a little background about you for folks who might not know you. Um, so how old are you? Um, what sort of work do you do outside of the legislature? And um, where do you live? Yeah, so Megan Jones uh, currently represent House District 2, running for House District 6. Uh, I am an attorney by trade, but I am no longer practicing. Um, in uh, 2014, my husband Will and I got married in Storm Lake, and we now have five babies. And we built our home in Southern Clay County on my husband's family farm. And um, outside of the legislature, I am a mom and a farm wife. And those two things keep me very, very busy. I, as you can see, I'm, I'm actually in the back of my, my mom car right now. And it's full of car seats, um, mm -hmm. uh, full of a stroller and, and blankets and all kinds of things that the kids, uh, the kids will need today. But uh, that's, that's my new gig. Very nice. And um, what, uh, what initially made you want to run for the legislature in the first place? Yeah, I had always been interested in government and politics and social studies in school. Um, I was fascinated by um, by government. And so um, when I was a high school senior, I volunteered on some political campaigns and um, I was asked to be a page and the Iowa House representatives. And I did that and I fell in love with the process and was so excited about how government actually functioned and I wanted to be part of it. And I uh, went to Drake for undergrad and then I went to William Mitchell College of Law for law school. And then um, while I was just about to graduate law school, uh, the maps were redistricted and uh, the house seat that I called home no longer had an incumbent representative. Mm -hmm. And so someone, I was talking to someone about how that all worked and they said, well, now you're going to run for it. And so I did. Um, and so in 2012, um, I ran and I was elected and I've been serving ever since. Gotcha. So that would be what, four terms now that you've served? I think five. <laughs> five. Okay. Five. Gotcha. And um, in the, the time that you've been serving then, uh, since that period, what um, legislation are you sort of proudest of uh, getting to work on? Yeah, so my favorite bill, uh, the bill that really makes this job worth it, was the adoption tax credit bill. I had a constituent pull me aside, and he told me that one of his family members was trying to adopt a child. And it was just becoming too financially burdensome for them to do that. And so we made an adoption tax credit. We were one of, I think, 18 states in the nation at that point that had an adoption tax credit. And uh, the goal really was to make it easier for families to adopt. But I think perhaps even more importantly, it started a really strong conversation in Des Moines about the cost of adoption. And so um, since then, we've expanded the adoption tax credit, um, but then also we've started a program through the state public defender's office uh, to, to make more adoptions free. And so while some adoptions in our state are free, um, I think my ultimate goal is to make adoptions free. There should be no reason that a child does not get a home in our state because another family can't afford it. Mm -hmm. And I think that we need to strive to make sure that kids are put into fantastic homes, but that also um, that financial barrier isn't there. And so uh, the last two years since we've implemented the program through the State Public Defender's Office, uh, we have been able to expand it. And um, we are we are hearing great stories come out of that program that kiddos are finding homes. And that's so important. And, and I know there's a lot of people on the front lines that are already making that happen, but uh, the legislature needs to open those doors too. Mm. And, um, you know, you mentioned um, sort of people sharing their stories with you in regard to that uh, legislation. Um, did you have any personal experience with um, that issue in your own life with, you know, family or friends or anything? 
No, uh, not not really. Um, but I will say I have um, found some friends in the legislature, and one of them is State Representative Brian Losey. And Brian Losey is known for a lot of things, um, notably uh, his family won the lottery. And so uh, he, he's he got a lot of resources at his uh, disposal um, uh, in that regard, but he has never forgotten his roots. And one thing that he has shared with me is that he's an adoptee himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he knows what it's like. His family has struggled um, even before they won the lottery. Um, they, they, you know, they were they had tight times and he knows what it's like to be in these kind of positions and um both both the from the financial spot a spot but then also from the adoptee spot and so i've really had the opportunity to learn so much from him um about adoption about the barriers um and about how families are just really trying to make this happen um so you've talked about the uh the legislation that you're sort of proudest of of working on um if you were to be uh, reelected in November, what issues would you want to make your top priorities in 2023? Yeah, so of course the budget is one, something that we really need to be mindful of. The federal government is is making a lot of changes, a lot of quick changes, a lot of big changes, and so we need to make sure that we can insulate Iowa as much as possible from from a dangerous economic status. Status. Um, we're in a pretty good pretty good financial condition right now. But I think a lot of that is because we've been very careful about how how we spend money and we've been very protective of the taxpayer dollar. And so we need to continue to put those parameters up to keep our guard up from the federal government to make sure that those uh, decisions that they're making on the federal level are are really what's in the best interest of Iowans. Mm -hmm. um, but from a policy perspective, definitely adoption is something that I'm going to continue to fight for and continue to work on um, because I think we can expand um, expand our options there. We need to make sure that kiddos have representation. And last year we were able to make that free. But then uh, this year, I think we need to make sure that attorney's fees are not charged to victims, are not charged to the, the parent who's 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 keeping the kid. Um, and some of those kind of in-depth intricacies that we don't always think of, um, but are huge financial barriers to these families. Hmm. Um, and you, you know, you mentioned the uh, budget. And obviously, uh, last week there were quite a few articles about the the budget surplus that the the state has. What would you like to maybe see some of that uh, surplus uh, put toward, if possible? Supplemental state aid, definitely. Mm -hmm. Our schools. I'm hearing it from our public schools that you know two and a half percent last year was not enough when we're seeing eight um eight percent inflation, and so we definitely need to um to dedicate a large portion of our budget and can, we always do um but we need to to bump that number up because our public schools need it and their costs are only on the rise too and then um sort of uh getting into i guess the election itself i i'm kind of always curious to talk to folks about this um what do you sort of believe sets you apart from your challenger in the race yeah, well, I don't know a whole lot about him. Um, and, and I, you know, I, I really haven't had a, a good conversation with him. Um, but I will say, you know, I'm going to stand on where what I've done in the legislature. I am responsive. I'm communicative. I think people of both sides of the aisle know that I'm someone that they can work with. I'm going to fight for my constituents and I'm going to fight for what's right. But at the same time, I'm I'm also reasonable. And if someone has a concern or a question about a bill, I, I will work with them to make sure that we can iron out those wrinkles and get the job done at the end of the day. Gotcha. And uh, you sort of answered my uh, next question, but if you want to expand on it anymore, um, you know, why ultimately should voters go with you in November? Yeah, I think if you ask uh, Republicans or Democrats in the legislature, um, they will say they'll say that I'm a bulldog, but at the same time, I'm fair and I'm reasonable. And so I'm willing to work with people to make sure that that language is in the best interest of Iowans, but we're not um, compromising on our objectives or our priorities, um, that we're making sure that um, that the state's essential services are funded, that we can make sure that we're taking care of kids and families and Iowans, and that we're making sure that this state is the best place in the nation for people to live, work, and play. Awesome. Um, those are all the questions that I had for you. Thank you very much, okay. uh, Jones, for your time.